The people of America understand the bill better than the people in this chamber. That's the problem. In August, there were town meetings and people were appalled at the number of people that wanted to go to those town meetings and the way that they wanted to speak and to explain to us why this method won't work. It wasn't because anybody organized them. If Republicans were that good at organization, we'd still be in the majority. These were just people that were concerned about health care and where it was going. And they'd read a lot about what had been said. And they're still reading about it. And they're still mad. This isn't where they want to go. The average person in America thought we were going to cut their health care costs or at least keep them from escalating. That isn't what this bill does. This bill builds a whole bunch of new programs and taxes people and steals from Medicare. That's not where the country wants to go, and I know that's not where the seniors want to go. This bill will impose $493 billion in new taxes, and those fall disproportionately on the backs of small businessmen and women. For instance, the new $54 billion increase in the Medicare payroll tax will hit approximately one-third of the small business owners across the country. These are the same businesses that employ over 30 million Americans. So why would this affect them? Do they make that much money? Well, that much money shows up on their books. Most of them are subchapter S corporations, which means that every dollar of profit becomes their own income even though they have to take most of it and put it back into the business in order to keep the business going and to grow the business. But some of them look like they make a lot of money. Um, there's some businessmen in, in uh, Gillette, Wyoming. They started a restaurant, and uh, they now have six restaurants. And I happen to be in one of their ones in, in Casper. And uh, Sanford's is the name of it. It was a brand new restaurant. And when I was there, the owner happened to be there. And, and he recognized me, and he came over and visited. And he, he knew we were working on this. And he said, you know, they just keep piling stuff on us. They think that we're rich. And sometimes the, the, the things that we have to file with the government because of our subchapter S corporation make us look rich and cost us a lot in taxes. We're helping to keep this government going. But we don't get to put it in our pocket. He said, we started that first business we each had $200 in our pocket, and we were able to borrow enough money to start that restaurant. Each restaurant that we built has been a little fancier, a little nicer. Said, the one you're sitting in right now cost a half a million dollars to build. And he said, you know, me and my partner still only have 200 bucks in our pocket. The rest of it we've had to plow back into the business. And when we plow it back into the business, it's more jobs. It's more people working. And I'll tell you, those are good jobs, too. We all agree that the status quo for health insurance is not acceptable. Equally unacceptable, however, should be any proposal that makes the current situation worse. Unfortunately, that's exactly what the Reed bill will do. That's right. Washington is going to tell you what kind of insurance you have to have. Even if it's a lot better than what you have now and you like what you have now. That's not good enough. Washington knows better for you what you need in the way of health insurance. And they're going to see that you get it. Boy, are you going to get it. Now, another thing that you can do as, a, as an employee here is have a flexible savings account. And that happens in a lot of businesses across the country. If you have company insurance, you can do a flexible savings account. This bill's going to do away with that, too. That's a way that if you know you're going to have some health expenses in the next year that don't fall within your policy, you can put that money in the bank again tax-free, and you can use it as those bills come due. And we're going to put a limit on that, and that limit isn't going to have any, any fluctuation dealing with inflation. So in two or three years, that program's gone. I don't know why these ones that encourage people to save money and plan for the future are such bad ideas.